Whenever you get recording software like PreSonus Studio One, it comes with built-in plugins, and usually the guitar amp simulators are things that we just stay away from. The assumption is that if it came free with the software, it's probably not good enough. Well, today I want to introduce you to Ampire from PreSonus Studio One. I've personally stayed away from this plugin for the very same reasons I'm talking about. I just assumed that Ampire from Studio One was not going to be usable for me in my situation. <laughs> I've got a video on my channel where I'm using the Strymon Iridium. It's pretty much the pedal I'm using all of the time. I usually have it set to a Fender Deluxe Reverb setting. I'm very satisfied with it. I've owned a Fender Deluxe Reverb in the past, but I have a kid and whenever kid's taking a nap, it didn't make sense for me because I couldn't record YouTube videos early in the morning. I couldn't record when it was nap time. So I've gone direct with just about everything. Well, in today's video, I'm using my Fender Stratocaster plugged directly into the input, the high impedance input of my Apollo interface. And I'm gonna show you how you can get a usable sound from Ampire that's probably gonna surprise you how good it sounds. You can see this is the Ampire plugin for PreSonus Studio One. Any track you're looking to add Ampire to, just hit the plus button, scroll down to PreSonus, and it's the first plugin on the list. Ampire comes loaded with a Marshall amp. It's crazy distorted. So the first thing you want to do is select this amp button and change it if you want to copy what I'm doing. You can go to the blackface twin setting. This is basically a Fender simulation. This Ampeg STV is basically a bass amp. Here we have a Marshall. This dual amplifier, which I imagine is a dual rectifier. I'm not big on the heavy guitar sounds, but you can probably check that one out as an alternative for the Marshall. And then you have a Vox AC30. They call it VC30. It's a little bit confusing, but the Blackface Twin is what I'm using in this video. I found this to be the most appealing to me. I'm going into the second input of the vibrato channel. Just so you know, the first input is going to be a little bit less gainy. It's going to be more clean. And then each of the channels have a bright switch. The vibrato channel has access to reverb and of course vibrato. I've got the vibrato intensity set to two, speed to three. It's a very subtle kind of warbly effect. And then the reverb is a little less than two. Now I will say that the reverb and the guitar pedals that come with this plugin, that's where you're gonna get into some trouble. But if you're just trying to get some creative ideas down, definitely check out Empire. Again, when you're recording with guitar, and using a plug-in like this, you need to have this button here, monitoring, turned on. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to hear what the plug-in is actually doing. So the main downside of using plug-ins as your virtual amp is that you're depending on your processing power on your computer. My Apollo interface and my computer do a decent enough job. I don't have enough perceivable latency or delay. It's not messing up my guitar playing. If you load Ampire and you start playing and you notice the delay is too much, this may be a route that you might need to save for a different computer. This is the big appeal of using something like a Strymon Iridium, using a pedal amp simulator, something like the Line 6 Helix or the Kemper. That latency is very minimal, and then by the time it goes into your computer through your audio interface, you don't really have any latency at all. So try to keep the effects down to a minimum. I've got the volume on this thing up at a 7. The more you turn it up, the more distortion you're going to get. But on this black face, it breaks up nice and cleanly. I don't really go for, as you'll hear in a few minutes, the Marshall effect is a little too much. The treble, I've got at four. The mid range is right about five. Bass is almost at four. And like I said, the reverb is at two. As far as pedals go, I do have this compressor loaded that I can turn on if I'd like. Right now it's bypassed. The delay is also bypassed. And then this reverb pedal. This reverb pedal, as far as PreSonus goes, 
sounds better than the reverb from their amp. Now, I know that that is subjective, but you take a listen and hear it for yourself. I've got the size of this thing set to 25% and the mix knob at 28%. If you're wanting to set this reverb, turn the mix knob all the way up so you're just hearing the reverb sound and then mess around with some of this high cut, low cut, and damp settings to find something you like. So this is gonna be always on. It's just giving me the sound of an ambient space. Up here on the top right, there's a tuning fork picture. That'll bring up a tuner from PreSonus Studio One. This one's actually very impressive. Uh, if you're familiar with the Peterson tuners, they'll also tell you the sense. Sense is not exactly half steps, but it's almost like you're micro tuning your guitar. So it'll get very, very specific. Here I am tuning this one. The strengths of the Empire plugin are definitely this tuner feature. I like this blackface twin option as well. I'd say the negatives are probably the guitar pedal selection, which again, if you want to use the plugins that come with PreSonus Studio One, the compressor plugin, the delay plugin, the reverb plugins that come with Studio One, you can add those instances afterward as you're mixing, or you can add them as an effects track. The Tube Screamer and some of the distortion effects that they have are a little too much for me. If you've got humbuckers and you're doing a lot heavier music, you can definitely check that stuff out. But if you're going for more of this like singer-songwriter, John Mayer kind of stuff, check out these settings. And then whatever settings you have, if you click this little notepad at the top left, you can click Store Preset. You can name the preset, like I've named this one My Fender. And you can put in a little description to go with it. You can put it into a subfolder, whatever you desire. And so next time you open up Empire, you can just go to the drop down and you've got your preset already ready to go. I hope this video has opened your eyes a little bit to what PreSonus Empire has to offer. Hope you've enjoyed some of the tones. Again, if you've got something like a Strymon or a Line 6 Helix or a Kemper, I'm not saying that you need to sell those things, but make use of Empire from PreSonus Studio One and it'll come through when you're in a pinch. Thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed the content, and I'll see you next time.